Hello, how you doing? Uh, my name is Dominic Morrow. I'm here is, uh, for one purpose only, is to get everybody to the Lord. I'm here for one purpose only. I'm here to deliver my testimony. I'm not here um, to try to convince you of anything. I'm not here to try to trick you. I'm not here. I'm just telling you about my personal experience in hell, which brought me and led me to God. I lived a life of sin. I was, you know, all in types of different religions, you know, poking around. I grew up in Santorin, um, New Age, everything you can name it to get, you know, uh, me financial things, uh, prestige, wealth, everything on this earth. But uh, yeah, everything changed for me in 2009. Uh, I was a game banger in Chicago. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I just got to get honestly, I, I just had to get my spirit right. Honestly, this is um, people don't understand. This is not anything lightweight. This is nothing I can just talk about off the fly. Um, I do have to get my energy together. So I just want to pray before I even start this. Dear Heavenly Father, I approach your throne with a sense of gratitude and also with a sense of urgency. Father, I need you to give me the power and the willpower and the shield of protection over my, my, of my mind, my heart, my emotions and everything so I can be able to just let all your children know the truth about eternity and the other side. Father, please put the protection of everyone who listens to this and witness anything um, that I'm a part of that you are sending me to. We love you and we thank you, Father, for your son, Yahshua, also known as Jesus Christ, by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, like I say, I was a um, seller drugs, game banger, you know, womanizer, whatever you want to call me, I was it. You know what I mean? Um, but in 2009, I'm just going to explain the incident uh, which happened. Selling drugs, we had a routine. We had a ritual. Well, we go to the, um, the nightclubs. I don't know where you all exist, whoever's listening. We go to the nightclubs every weekend. And uh, we were going shopping. And I'm from uptown Chicago, and it's very populated, 500,000 people in my district. So uh, for you to run into people multiple times within a few hours is unheard of. But for some reason, me and my my, my friend, we, went, we go shopping for the night, and then we see the, this guy. I come out the store, this guy sitting on his car, in the hood of his car, and just something about my spirit just caught my attention. He said, what's up to us? I just said, I didn't think nothing of the first thing, but something in my, my spirit. A few hours later, we're on a different side of Uptown, Chicago. So huge, you guys know what I'm talking about. There's no way you can run to the same person like two or three times. It's impossible. But we come out the second store again, and the same guy is sitting there, the same gentleman sitting on his car. And I looked to my friend this time, and I said, hey, man, this guy's following us, man. Like, there's no way, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This dude is something. He's on something. My friend... You know, he jokingly turned to me and was just like, man, you're not that important. We're not that important. Nobody's following you or us. Quit tripping, man. You're paranoid. So I kind of, all right, cool. I, I I just joked it off and moved around. All right, maybe you're right. Maybe I am paranoid because back in the day, I used to smoke a lot of marijuana and I was high at the time. So maybe I was paranoid. So I said, okay, cool. Well, a few hours later, you know, we go back to our apartment. Everybody gets dressed. We're ready for the night. We're ready to go out. We come out of my building in the project, and I see the same guy. He's standing right there in front of my building, leaning on the gate, though. Then I said, okay, forget it. This time, I'm going to have to go ask this guy, do I know him from anywhere, somewhere? You got to be following this, because I never seen you in my nowhere. You ain't not, you're not from around here. So as I went to go approach him, he had a cigar in his mouth, and uh, before I can ask him anything, he asked me, he said, do I have a lighter so he can light a cigar? And uh, as I was reaching in my pocket and I was asking him, I was going to ask him, where do I know you from? I've been seeing you all. But before I even said, man, where do I? All I saw was a green flash. It was, I didn't feel no pain. I didn't feel no force. All I smelt was like matches, sulfuric uh, matches. If you burn a whole book of matches, that's the closest I can describe. And also, I I, uh, I just saw this light. It was green. But then when I looked up, it seemed like everything turned to slow motion. When I looked at him, and, he, and I saw what happened because he shot me again. But this time when he looked at me, it was so demonic. It was evil. Um, yeah, it's hard. Um, like, yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> he, he shot me again, but the look on his face was so demonic. Um, I'll never forget it. But like I always say, this is one thing changed for me is because the second time I felt the force, I felt the pain when he shot me the second time, but I flew back. But now um, as I flew back and I was spreading my arms, I was about to, I, I, can, I can feel myself literally physically about to fall on my back. But the weirdest thing is I started to fall forward, face down. I, I know it makes no sense, but it is what it is. Um, this is the spiritual dimension I was telling you about. Um, even though I was laying backwards, I was falling face down forward. Now, instantly, I was in darkness. Um, like I explained over and over again, this darkness is alive. This is a darkness that grips you. It goes through you, in you, hugs you, smothers you, chokes you. It's a lie. It's not a regular darkness here on this earth. But I can feel myself falling. Um, and so, uh, with speeds, like I always say, you know, I only can compare it to the speed of light. Which they measure is 186,000 miles a second, but it had it's out of this dimension is faster than that. The, which I was falling, it is it's outside of this realm. But the darkness, that's what I can't get over. Um, I, I knew as I was falling, and the further and the faster as I was falling, I was getting stripped of everything inside of me, meaning that was good that God gave us that we take for granted that we don't recognize. Fellowship, love, hope, belief. I mean, every detail that is good was coming out of me as I'm falling. That's even hard to explain, but it is. I only can get as close to um, explaining it as I can. Now, as I'm falling and I'm being stripped and the fear and the terror is just like, it's just gut, it's just draining everything out of me. I never experienced anything like this. I was just standing in front of the building and now I'm in falling faster than I can imagine in this dimension. It won't even happen that fast. Um, that's what I want people to know. I, I don't know what anybody else went through. I didn't go in front of a judgment seat. I didn't sit there and plead my case in front of our Father God. I didn't. That didn't exist. It happened like that. It, it When I died, I was instantly sentenced, put it that way, to hell. There was no communion. There was no case. There was no Nothing. I got, I got sent straight to hell. Um, wow. Mm. As I'm falling and falling, then what hit me was an odor, a smell that was so bad. Uh, if you were still on earth, like I always explain, you would die if you smell it. The smell that is in that dimension of hell uh, is beyond... I, there's nothing I can compare it to. Like I always say, you can take a thousand corpses, you can put animals, you can do all the dead bodies you want, and it still won't even resemble what I smell. Even the smell is, like I told you, if he was here, you would die. If he was to smell once, the smell of it, you would die. If he was here on this earth. I'm falling, I'm smelling the smell. My fear is beyond comprehension. I don't know what's going on. I'm falling in this, this darkness. It's not even dark. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, then I see a little light. It's like this big. It's a little pin drop of light. And as I look at the light, it's getting bigger. As I'm falling towards it, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Then all of a sudden, I felt heat. It's like a brush of heat, but it's a different type of heat. Um, one thing I do want to explain so everyone can kind of get a picture because it's hard to even, every time I, 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 I say my testimony, it's, it's the hum There's no human word for this stuff. So I'm getting close as I can. So hopefully you can interpret and try your best because some of the things that I'm saying that I can't, I can't even describe, that I wish I can tell you, but I don't have no words to formulate it. So everything that I'm telling you, I'm getting close as I possibly can to let you know what I experienced. Because um, everything is not even close to what we experience on earth. Everything that you think it is, is not. Uh, everything is over exaggerated, which, um, which I mean. Also, I'm glad. Thank you, Lord. Um, like my senses, for example, our senses here on earth, we have five senses. We can feel, smell, see, touch. But when you go there in the other dimension, those you don't lose that. Just because you lose your body, that don't mean you lose your senses. Um, 
your senses are heightened times a million. And that's the that's an understatement, but that's the best way. So when you see, you see a million times more you can see here on earth. Your detail of your pinpoint, you can pinpoint an atom if you wanted to. But in hell, you don't have no concentration. So, I mean, your vision is still a million times plus, but you're so bombarded. But that's another story. The whole point is that when I was falling, and not only did I smell the smell, I noticed that my senses were heightened because the smell was even spiritual. It was a part of the It was a part of me. It's just weird to explain. Um, and then also the heat. When I felt that brush of heat, I, I, listen, you guys, I told you all, I was just standing in front of the building talking to this guy. And in an instant, I was in this dimension where everything feels different, sounds different. You, everything is completely not even close to what this earth is. It's not even close. Um, like I told you, I'm trying to use descriptive language to get close as possible. But the heat that I felt, I felt it from the head, the top of my head to my feet instantly. There was no building up to it. There was no separateness in it, like I always explain to. Um, in the human body, we have a nervous system. So if you get poked in your hand, you can feel it in your hand, right? If someone comes smack you in the face, you feel it in your face. Your face starts changing. But in the spirit body, there's no physical. There's no nervous system. Everything is one. So if I'm going to come smack you in the face right now, you're going to feel it from the head, top of your head to the bottom of your feet instantly at one time. There's no separation. And that's the best way I can describe that. So when I felt that heat, it was so foreign to me. It was so new, but it was so painful. It was a different pain. It's a different descriptive of pain. I'm falling, I'm falling, and then that's when it hit me. I started hearing, it's the next step. These screams uh, of horror, terror, but it's got, I mean, hundreds of millions of people, probably billions, and I knew that. That's another thing that started registering to me when I was over there. It's like I'm, my awareness and my knowledge of everything was everything. There was no time lapse. There was no need to learn anything. I knew it. I knew everything. I knew. I knew everything. So when I was falling and I started seeing this portal, it looked like an old well. Never forget. It looked like a stone, like a water well. But it was glowing. That was the light that I was seeing. There was no light at the end of the tunnel of no heavenly nothing. What I saw was a glowing well, which was a portal, and it was glowing. It was full of hot stones. The, the stones of that well were so hot. That's the light I was seeing. It was orange, yellow, and white. They were piping hot. That was the light. There was no light of God. There was no light of love, nothing. No, I saw the light of that portal to hell that I was going to. I'm falling towards it, and instantly it sucked me in. It was an engulfment on top of the screens, on top of everything. Also, I should mention, what scared me about the screen is that I can hear each individual person. Meaning, if you have a sea of people, you have thousands of people, and they all cheering and roaring and doing whatever, I can hear distinctively each individual person, no matter if they were screaming at the same time. That's even hard to explain, but I'm just dropping it off to you. I'm about to hit this well, listen, and it sucked me in. It was like, and it just, I can, it, it, it was so much force how it sucked me in, and then it just dumped me. I was back into the darkness in which I just left. But the thing was, I hit the ground this time. I felt physical sensation. Like I said, from the top of my head, it was a different pain. I hit the ground with so much force, and all I know, I couldn't move. And it was that same darkness I was telling you about. That's it's alive. It was it's not a darkness, darkness, but all of a sudden I heard it. <sighs> and that's what Joe took me to try to look up. And when that flame, it was a flame that came out of a pit and it illuminated the whole place. Then I saw where I was at. Um, first thing I saw in front of me, 100 to 200 feet, was a pit. But then when I looked, they were pits. When I say pits, huge pits in rows. They were perfectly uniform, but they go miles and miles and miles. It's like, like, yeah, like forever, pretty much, because I can see that. 
See, with your, with your spiritual body, your eyes, everything. I told you, your senses are heightened. I can see as far as my eye can even imagine where these perfect aligned rows of pits. And in these pits are so big, they fit hundreds of people, maybe thousands. The one thing I knew, there were people in those pits. And the first thing I looked up, and I couldn't move. Um, I'm trying to move. I'm beyond terrified. That's another thing I need to warn everybody about. In hell, your fear it's always growing. It has no limit. It has no cap to it. Um, so when you think you're at the climax of your fear, it just bumps you up and you start a whole nother level of fear that you can't even experience here on this earth. You can't even experience it in your imagination. I promise you, you can't. You can't even fathom. I'm trying to explain the things that I saw as best as I can. I can't even do it with my imagination. What I saw, what I experienced, my imagination can't even catch up to my True experience. It, it's unbelievable. But I'm looking at these pits and I saw the flame. But then when I saw the horrifying, all these pits, these people, they weren't, they were blanket, first of all. Um, some of them were skeletons. Some of them were skeletons with flesh hanging off of them. And they in the lava of pits. But what scared me the most were the things that were surrounding the pits. There were these demon-like creatures, all sizes, small, but the ones that they were giants. They were giants, 13, 18 feet tall, some of them 15 feet tall. I, I'm just guesstimating, but what I'm telling you, these things are real giants. Giants exist. They did exist here on the earth, and they are definitely in hell right now, I promise you. Uh, but these things were, I, I all had a reptilian um, look to them. They were very muscular. That's one thing I remember. These things were like you're talking about the humanoid and the giants, though. The giants were the most humanoid, uh, almost uh, resembled us, perfectly formed. Any other demon after that looked deformed and really just, that's another story. Um, but the, I remember this one giant, and he was standing by the pit because people were trying to crawl out the pits, okay? And what they would do, they were all around. Every pit that you could see, it had these demon creatures around all the pits to keep the people in the pits. People were trying to crawl out the pits, especially the giants that grabbed by the head and they dunk them back in. It was like lava in the pits. And then they had these sticks and they were poking them up so people would not crawl out the pits. They were trying to escape. They were screaming. They It was... Uh, listen, I don't even... Hey. <clears throat> All I'm telling you all is that um, if you don't believe hell is real, you qualify to go. I I, I don't even um, the stuff that I'm um, you know every time that I do this, I'm gonna be 100. It takes a lot out of me. It takes a whole lot. Um, it's beyond PTSD, okay? Because I'm experiencing this all over again. I'm telling you, if you believe me or not, I don't really care. I'm sorry. But um, it takes a lot out of me every time to go through this, a lot. So I'm laying there. I can't move. It feel like I'm a thousand pounds. I can't. I can't move. I'm, I'm trying to move, and it feel like every aorta, and then that's when it hit me. Every single thing that we take for granted, and I will never forget, because that's when it slapped me in my face. Even on the way when I was falling through that darkness, and I was telling you all that I was being stripped of the attributes of God as I was falling. It's fact, because by the time I landed, I realized and I knew even movement, breathing, laughing, smiling, blinking, hearing, everything comes from God. Everything that we take for granted comes from him. And the, the sense of regret not only hit me once I realized that, um, that's even a whole nother weight on itself. Um, I tried to move. But I'm looking, I am so terrified. I, I don't even know, that's not even, that's an understatement. There's no word to describe it, so I'm going to use terrified, afraid, fear. That's the best I can get to it here on earthly uh, explanation. I try to move, and then I remember this one, the one giant demon, he looked at me. He glanced at me and started, he like kind of laughed. He looked at me, but with this, like the way he smiled at me, that's when another revelation hit me because I took another look. And I saw how they were dunking the humans inside these pits, taking them out, dunking them in, 
but they were laughing. They were laughing. They were having so much fun torturing us. Not only the fun was stuck out to me. I, the Lord gave me pure discernment. It was the energy they were getting out of the pain that we were feeling, that they were eating from. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say it until my lungs stop working. Demons feed off of our pain. They were feeding off of every stitch of pain. Just like here on earth, they feed off your depression, your anxiety, your anger, your hurt, physically, mentally, spiritually. That's their food. And I realized that in that instant, when I saw, I, I mean, you all, when you're on the other side, in your spirit body, you can have a hundred thoughts going on at the same time. Here on earth, we can't do that. We got to separate. We got to stop. We get confused. When you're in your spirit body, you can feel all the stress, all the questions, all the fear, everything at one time. There's no compartmentalization. That comes from God, by the way, too, to separate things in our hearts that we can deal with here on earth. We take everything for granted. You don't have that in hell. I didn't have that. And it was horrible. All Everything was clashing together. I was thinking all this fear, just like every time I get more and more and more scared, more and more fear looking at these things, and then I'm getting my thoughts on top of that. It never uh, diversified itself. It was all one clump, all at one time, simultaneously, or you experience these things. Pain, everything. It is no separation. But as I'm trying to get up, and I feel like I'm wearing a, a heavy suit, which is a thousand pounds, I barely can move. Then what really freaked me out is I couldn't breathe. In reality is because I got snatched out of my physical body so fast, there is no oxygen in that place. So I was pretty much fooling myself. So I'm trying to breathe, and that's making me more paranoid. It's making me more scared, making me more, you know. Um, but all of a sudden, I can feel in the back of me. It's like, like a, you can feel the tremble. Like something was big walking behind me, but I couldn't even turn around to even look at it. But before I can even muster in the fear that I was feeling, I got gripped by the back of my head. And this thing was so big, I took the claws were around my face and it was huge and it grabbed me from the back of my head. And it just threw me like I was nothing. Like I didn't weigh anything. I'm telling you that like, that was like, um, I wouldn't say the beginning of my experience, but that was the beginning of a terror um, that was already that I was experiencing, but to enter another dimension of terror. When I got grabbed and they threw me, like I was nothing. Like I tell people, the strength of people here on earth, you could be the strongest man or woman, live all the weight you want, you don't have no match for the for them demons. They are way beyond, like strength, you, you don't count. Without the Lord, you ain't your muscles, all of that stuff, you ain't nothing. I promise you, I felt so light in the force and the power of this thing, demon, that threw me, I was nothing. But the thing is, I flew, and then I hit this, like, stone wall. But it wasn't a stone wall at all. It was actually a side of a mountain because once I got to the fear, and I, I'm, I'm still thinking this thing is going to chase me through me. It's going to come and attack me. So I'm million thoughts going through my mind. I don't know where I'm at. I can't move. This place is hot. It stinks beyond all, like, I can't even, it's hard to even explain everything. And it's all happening at the same time. There's no separation of emotions. So I'm being bombarded by all of this. Then I look up, I'm on the side of a mountain. This is a mountain that is so big, but this is not an ordinary mountain because this mountain had nothing but jail cells built in the side of the mountain all the way, like in tears, all the way up. All the way, as far as your eye can see, I'm talking about the rows of people who are in those pits. The far as I can see up, and I know what that's like. I told you guys, I grew up in the skyscraper my whole life, but and it was way big. It, but it was a whole mountain, and it was full of jail cells. And these jail cells were old. And that's another thing I'm going to add, so people can know when you go to eternity, you know everything. You know everything. Meaning, when you see a person in hell. You know why they're there. But I knew instantly when I looked at this place, it was ancient. It was super ancient. And these people have been here for thousands of years. 
thousands of years, and they were there because they were warlocks, they were riches, uh, 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 witches, they were uh, 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 studying uh, 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 the stars, astrology, worshiping the elements, and I knew they were worshiping demons, like the Lord. And then they were in that side of that mountain is because not only they were doing it themselves, they left thousands and thousands of people in their tribes and their communities and cultures to follow demons instead of him. Plain and simple. Everything, uh, every person in there, and they look so demonic and hostile, and some of them getting tortured by little demons, and it's just uh, pretty bad. But before I can even get my mind fixed and wrapping, I'm trying to lean up, and I'm trying to get up, and I'm, I'm just looking, and I'm just so amazed that every person that I look at, I know why they're there. So not on top of the fear, not on top of having all the wisdom of everything that I'm experiencing, I also have the wisdom and insight of everybody that I look at of why they're there. I, it's not even hard to explain, but it's just instant. You know, you just know as if it was you, actually. But I'm look. I'm beyond. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to get up, and I lean up, and I, I manage to crawl on the top or like on the side of the mountain by this one cell, all of a sudden I can feel it again. Um, the best way I can describe it is that swoosh, when I was telling you when I first entered the portal, it was a and then I'm getting thrown out again. But this time I'm thrown out to a whole nother level. See, hell is full of compartments and departments. Um, well, thank you, Lord, because I forgot to explain that. What I'm going to explain to you is, I don't care if you believe it or not. It is what it is. Um, everyone has a wide spectrum of sinning, but everyone has one sin that sticks out in your personality the most. And that one sin that sticks out in your personality the most, whether if you're a thief, uh, you're too uh, promiscuous, you're a liar, you're a gossiper, that one sin sticks out and they have a department for you in hell. So whatever your prominent or dominant sin is that runs your personality, you are going to have a correspondence department in hell for, meaning you're going to go to hell for it. I just promise you. Um, this one thing I told you, hell is very chaotic, but it's very organized. I, I was just blown away by that, how it looks so, it's beyond any junkyard, any weird, just most gross place here on earth, but it's so organized. And that's what blew me away. And that still blows me away to this day. I tell people hell and uh, the demons of hell are more organized than any military here on earth. Um, you all, I, I, it's just so much to explain. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to be abruptly um, honest. Um, I want to do a part two so I can finish on this podcast. Um, there's so much to explain. There's so much more details and stuff that I want to get into. But right now, do you all, uh, like I tell you, it takes a lot out of me to even do these. Um, so if the host, if you want to tune back in, I would like to continue this and do a part two from where we left off. Because right now, um, I'm spiritually feeling I can't continue um, with it because that's how much is going on in my mind. But I would love um, to continue it. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I haven't done this before, but it's so much. Um, I don't think you all understand what's waiting for you. I don't, I, I don't, you know what? And the fact is that people don't believe. That's what makes me hurt the most because I know you qualify. When you don't believe hell don't exist, you don't believe the devil exists, demons, even God, our Father you automatically qualify yourself to go there. And the more of me talking about it, I don't know what it is about it. Um, today, I, I'm even, uh, I ain't smell stuff right now. I'm serious. Um, you all, I need you to know, hell is real. Hell is real. And it's waiting for you. There's no such thing as no space too big because it's forever growing and it's going to consume you and it has a place for you, even if you don't think about it. Just like right now, wherever country you're in, jail has a place for you if you break the law. I promise you, there will be some space for you to get locked up. So it is in hell. You have more than enough space waiting for you. 
So I advise you guys to start believing. And um, I would love to finish the part two uh, in more details, but I'd like you guys to go to blessedtobechosen.com. Um, the book is actually being released today. And we also have it on Kindle or ebook. And there's so much more details that I can't even describe. That's another thing that makes it hard for me to describe here on any platform is because I cannot give too many intimate details. Because, yeah, it might get the person or the pocket, the host of the podcast in trouble or it may get me in trouble. It kick everything off, I'll say anyway. So you all, um, please go to blessedbechosen.com. Order the book today, or you can order the ebook. If not, I will also be on here to explain the second part as much as I can. But I also, um, I do have to go. I appreciate your time. I love you all, and God bless you. And um, yes.